In this episode, I'm gonna tell you how I shot the super blue blood moon over the skyline of London. Supermoons always attract a lot of media attention. You can't scroll through your newsfeed without reading about a big upcoming lunar event, especially if you're following any of the photography related newsfeeds. So let me explain a little bit more about what really is the super blue blood moon. A super moon is a name for a full moon when the satellite is at the closest point in its orbit around Earth. So a blue moon happens when there's a second full moon in a calendar month. It's relatively rare, hence the expression once in a blue moon. The last one in London happened in May 2016. And finally, the blood moon comes from its red appearance during a total lunar eclipse basically meaning when the moon is in the Earth's shadow. And the fully technical way to describe it is best if I actually read it. The color is caused by the blue light scattering as the sun's rays pass are refracted through the Earth's atmosphere. Yeah, just that. That's when it becomes red. And this is the first time all these three events, supermoon, blue moon and blood moon, will be visible in Europe since the past 36 years. And in America, apparently, it was last seen 152 years ago. So the first time I've read about this was probably about a month ago. So I've had a good few weeks notice to research where should I be in order to shoot the moon rising above iconic elements of the London skyline, which I meant was like all the skyscrapers, uh, possibly London Eye or the Shard. I was planning to get it to rise above some recognizable London structures. I visualized the proportions of the moon and the buildings, how I would like to shoot it, and it was absolutely crucial for me to know where exactly I should be in order for the moon to rise perfectly where I want it to rise. The first place I go for this kind of planning is a website called mooncalc.org. Check out this link. And while I was doing all this planning, I was speaking with friends uh, over chat groups and one of my friends actually sent me a link to a website called timeanddate.com slash eclipse, check out this link, which actually said that the moon will not be in the eclipse seen in Europe, it will be mostly seen in Americas and Asia and we will basically not see the red color in Europe. That put quite a downer on the whole planning and um, scheduling me to go out and shoot what I wanted to shoot. But in the end I thought it's a blue moon, it's gonna be a super moon, I will still give it a go. I love to shoot skylines and the best skylines for me are the ones really really far away where with a long telephoto or a long prime lens you get to compress all the distance uh, far far away on the horizon. These kind of shots where you get to squeeze in a distance of buildings that are potentially far far away from each other around the skyline are the best photos I absolutely love shooting. So for that reason I decided to go with Richmond Park. I know there's a road called Sawyer's Hill that when you go to the top of that road the skyline just opens up perfectly and thanks to the moon calculator I found out that from there the moon should be rising somewhere along the main skyscrapers of the City of London financial cluster. But Richmond Park is 10 miles away from the city of London. So for that you need a big lens like this. This is the Nikkor 200 to 500 telephoto lens. It, it operates at aperture 5.6 and it would give me a good enough zoom but I thought this isn't enough. You gotta throw a 2 times teleconverter to get even closer like here. Yes, now that's better. Basically at the 500mm focal length of this lens with a 2 times teleconverter this gives me 1000mm reach 
and coupled with the amazing Nikon D850 which has got 45 megapixels I would still be able to crop in a little bit if I needed to and to shoot with this massive setup you need a good big heavy sturdy tripod like the Manfrotto 351 MVB special video tripod for heavy video cameras which I actually used back in the days when I used to do more video work so this tripod does come in handy when I'm shooting on big telephoto lenses it's heavy it's sturdy it stops the wind from shaking the camera uh, and yes this is my favorite uh, choice for big 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 zoomed in shots and with that setup I thought I at least have a chance of capturing something special now all I was left was being at the mercy of the weather conditions although weirdly all the weather aspects that I normally monitor for going out to shoot skylines like wind speed, uh, humidity, clouds, uh, overall visibility seem to suggest I might actually get lucky on the day I made sure I also researched where to park to not waste time driving around not knowing where to park I got there 30 minutes before the moon set time. I got a few warm up shots. I set my shutter on a five second delay that when I press the button or the little shake will stabilize on the tripod and the photo will be taken without any shake. I've set everything into manual mode. I decided with settings F11, I saw 400 one twentieth of a second because it was getting dark and the lens is 5.6 but when you put a two times teleconverter you actually lose two stops so the lowest f-stop that I could shoot was f11 hence I had to raise that ISO to 400 because it was low amount of light that was coming into the sensor hence I didn't want to shoot too slow shutter because it could actually introduce any shake with wind because there was still quite a bit windy but wind isn't bad because wind tends to clear any haze on the horizon so a little bit of wind is actually better than no wind but it affects how you shoot on your tripod that's why you have to shoot a bit faster and with all that that was it the moment of truth when I just hoped for the best and it happened the moon started rising in between the cheese grater and the scalpel like I could see the tiny little bit of redness bang straight away from the horizon it was amazing I did an Instagram live story where you could see how absolutely excited way too excited I was like this oh my word check this out check this out Richmond Park look what's going on when the moon fully rose off the horizon it looked comparable to a 50-story skyscraper because it was right next to the walkie-talkie building which is about 40 floors and it was actually higher than that it was just mind-blowing seeing this happen on the LCD screen and at that moment I probably started having this feeling that I might be taking the best photos in my career and photos I might never ever get to repeat again the next morning I posted the photo on my Instagram and it went crazy it received over 17,000 likes to date reached over a hundred thousand people and over 400 comments Nikon UK featured my photo on their Facebook page which was an immense privilege and they also featured it on their Twitter account If you're interested in buying prints from me, visit my website where you can place the order or email me to discuss additional printing options. It's good to take chances in photography or in life in general, calculated chances. Even if you think all the variables that make a good shot won't be on your side, prepare, research, take your best shot at it and you never know, you might find yourself in a position that you know at this time you are taking the best photo of your life thanks a lot guys for watching hopefully you enjoyed the pictures and please subscribe if you like this video for more videos like this and all around london and follow me on instagram i'm london viewpoints for daily photos and uh, viewpoint recommendations all around london see you next time